Hello everyone, welcome to Scott Reviews Things in four and a half minutes. And what am I reviewing this time? I am reviewing Mystery Science Theater 3000, the comic, trade paperback. Uh, I just want to, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed reading this. This comic is so much fun. It captures the television show perfectly in comic book form. Um, I read this in one sitting. It's not, a, you know, it's a fairly long, it's six comic books, all six comic books into the trade paperback. It was, it was that engrossing. It was that fun as a television show. The, in this, uh, what happens is, a brief synopsis, the mad scientists put uh, our robot friends and Jonah into comic books. They're not just reading comic books and riffing comic books. They are actually in comic books. And the, I just want to, the, the, that is just so amazing to me that they've done this. They put, um, they put Jonah in a 1940s superhero comic. They put Crow in a 1950s horror comic. And they put Tom in a 1960s uh, teenager comic. And the artwork, the artwork in this comic book is impeccable. They captured the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s beautifully. Every single one looks, if you took a comic from the 1940s or 50s and you compared it to the, how they drew it in this, you could not tell the difference. They did it that well. And the stories, the stories themselves that the, the characters are in are actual believable stories that would have happened during those times. They're taking what was and adding what is and it just came up with a fantastic way uh, for you to spend your time reading this. And the riffs, the humor in this is like 3D chess from Star Trek, where you have uh, you have Jonah, Crow, and Tom. Uh, they're all the main characters, or they're, they're, they work with the main characters in all these stories. But then you have all the other bots that are on the ship riffing, just like the TV, just like the TV show where they're in the corner and they're riffing. But then you have Crow and Jonah and uh, Tom. They're all riffing about being in the comic, being very meta, talking to the characters in the comic like they're not in the comic but they are in the comic and then the characters in the comic are commenting on the comic and then you have the all-knowing narrator when you see panels about what's happening they're making jokes about the comic it's just like the t like the tv show you have to pay attention because the jokes come at you really really fast just you have to read this comic very very carefully or else you're going to miss a lot of jokes which come from a lot of different directions you have to pay attention this is not an easy breezy book where you can just you know just page through and just look at the you no know, pay attention if you pay attention you're going to get uh, there's a couple of jokes that I had to go back and reread it's like oh i remember that because they make references to the old tv show and um they just they make references of the time, the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and then they incorporate the 2019s. So there's a nice juxtaposition there about humor then and humor now, and how things were written then and how things are written now. You get that. Uh, I would say the only one drawback, uh, and it's a very, very small one, is I wish I could have seen more of the MST universe. I wish we could have seen Mike and Joel and uh, TV's Frank, and Dr. Forrester, and Brain Guy, and Pearl. Uh, this is a comic book. You can do anything you'd you can do anything you want in the comic book. I wish we could have seen more of them. I don't know why. I don't know if it was copyright or anything like that, or they couldn't get permission to use certain people. Uh, but that would have uh, that would have been nice to see, like the whole MST universe in one comic. But other than that. This comic was a joy to read from start to finish. You're going to pick it up. If you're not a Mystery Science Theater fan, you're not going to get it. But if you are a Mystery Science Theater fan, you are going to love this comic. 